continue, continuing with the BPF stuff, uh, about Kriki and uh, Michael Friese from Microsoft will talk to us about data collection with Inspector Gadget. So let's welcome them. Okay, then. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Cool. Uh, so yes, this is about eBPF and Inspector Gadget. My name is Alban. I'm one of the maintainers of Inspector Gadget. Yeah, I'm Michael, or Michael. I'm also a maintainer of Inspector Gadget, Microsoft. And today we will talk about Inspector Gadget, an introduction about its architecture. And we will uh, tell a story uh, that will uh, be used to show you demos about Inspector Gadget on how to write your own gadgets to share them and to uh, push, pull them, and reuse them. And at the end, uh, exporting Inspector Gadget uh, through different ways. So an introduction to Inspector Gadget. So Inspector Gadget are two different things. One is a set of tools. We call those tools gadgets. And um, those tools are inspecting either Linux or Kubernetes systems using eBPF programs. But it's also a framework to, um, to build gadgets into compiled code, into um, gadget images, and to build them, to package, uh, deploy them, uh, run them, uh, and uh, share them. So uh, this project started in 2019, uh, some years ago. Um, initially, it was uh, focused on Kubernetes. It was about taking BCC tools and uh, make them available in the Kubernetes context. Uh, so at the beginning, it was uh, Kubernetes only because of that. But now it's uh, quite different. Now we have a, a tools, uh, CLI tools called IG, uh, that is not nothing about Kubernetes running on Linux host. And we have a kubectl gadget, uh, kubectl plugin, which is about Kubernetes. So we have different ways of running it in different contexts. So we actually build a framework out of that. And we are moving away from the previous way, which was building gadgets, building in the IG um, binary, into um, images like we can share, uh, a bit like the Docker system, where not all uh, container images are inside the Docker binary, but uh, Docker only is a, just a framework to use uh, images. So uh, we talk about eBPF here. Uh, eBPF is something that runs in the Linux kernel, and it cares about low-level uh, things like uh, Linux namespaces, cgroup, sockets, IP address, and so on. Uh, but in the end, what the user care about is not necessarily those things, but it's more high-level context like container names, Kubernetes, labels, and these things. And how do we translate things from one word to another? And that's what Inspector Gadget uh, would be helpful there. So uh, some tools and concepts. Yeah, uh, so this is an overview of the Inspector Gadget and its binaries, basically. Uh, we can either run on Kubernetes, that's the left part, or on a Linux host, natively, that's the right part. For that, we have uh, IG as a tool. That is the tool that you can build your own gadgets with. Uh, you can run it as a uh, daemon, so it can uh, in the, uh, run gadgets in the background. And we have client tools to connect to either your Kubernetes world or to your um, IG that is running on a Linux host. Um, in the center of the picture, you can see um, what we call operators. That's basically what IG consists of, different modular parts that um, can extract data from uh, BPF programs, that can sort them, filter them, and do many different things like exporting them to, for example, Prometheus and things like that. So yeah, what is a gadget, a gadget actually? Um, nowadays, it's an OCI image that contains different things. It contains uh, mostly an EPPF program that runs in the kernel. It can contain uh, WASM modules that can uh, do data post-processing, for example. So whenever you extract data from your kernel, you can build a WASM module alongside it, and it will process your data. And you also can add some metadata to um, annotate things, to make it basically, to, to control the operators, for example, later on. And yeah, that's the metadata. And in the end, you, get, you will get a deployable unit that you can also share using container registries. Yeah. Okay. So how does a gad gadget work then? So you in, usually, you start with your eBPF program that you build in C. 
and um, Inspector Gadget will uh, then compile it, and from the compiled eBPF binary, it will get or extract your structs that you define in C. And from that, it will build data sources that go through the pipeline that we saw earlier in the picture. And um, then we have different operators that can evaluate those data sources and fields that have been extracted and can enrich them with data that is coming from higher level uh, things like uh, Kubernetes, add your pod name, namespaces, and so on. And also later on export that to your command line or to JSON, to a file, to a log server, or home telemetry. We have different kinds of exporters for that. Yeah. OK, so this picture is a bit more precise uh, diagram of the architecture of Inspector Gadget. Uh, we are here the um, AG process. This AG process is communicating with different subsystems. Optionally, you can talk to Docker, ContainerD, the Kube API server to get uh, data about containers running. Um, and then it will run a gadget. And a gadget, uh, as I said previously, it has uh, some parts that can run in user space, the WASM module. In case it has a part that runs in kernel, the BPF part. And this BPF part will be attached to some specific hook in the kernel, to, uh, depending on what it is. It could be K-probs, U-probs, network program, and so on. In this example, it's a trace point. So it will be uh, attached to the uh, execv trace point, meaning uh, every time uh, another process will run this system call, uh, the BPF program will be executed. Um, that's about it. Yeah, so we prepared a little story that hopefully everyone can relate to. Uh, you're at a new job, and your first job is to actually replace a tool that has been there for ages, does some things, and yeah, you just have to figure out what it does because no one has the source code anymore. And um, we just got a few information about it, and uh, that is the tool that was written in Go ages ago. Um, it runs on the Kubernetes cluster, it collects some data from a file and then pushes it to some server. And yeah, the credentials used for that are also not known anymore. So please go figure out and replace that tool. Yeah, and Alban will, will display, uh, show how to do that. Okay, so from the assignment, we know that it's running on Kubernetes. Um, but first, uh, Inspector Gadget can run in different contexts, and this diagram helps to uh, choose what method you will use to run Inspector Gadget. So um, I will go to this branch since it's running on Kubernetes, and then we have different ways to run it there. We could, uh, if we want to run just one command, you can use the kubectl debug node command that will uh, temporarily deploy a ephemeral container in Kubernetes and run Inspector Gadget there, and get the output, and uh, close it. Uh, if you want uh, to run it for a long time, uh, for example, you want to push metrics to Prometheus or you want to run several commands uh, quickly, you, you can install it. It will be installed in a daemon set on Kubernetes. And we have a couple of ways to do that. You can use the Helm chart that we provide, or you can use the kubectl gadget uh, plugin, and there is a kubectl gadget deploy command that you can use to deploy it as a daemon set. Otherwise, if you don't use Kubernetes, um, there are other a couple of ways you, to run it uh, with the IG command um, as a single command, or you can use a client-server model with the IG as a daemon and gadgetctl as a client, and that could be useful if uh, if you run it for a different machine on Windows or Mac, for example. Uh, in this demo, we focus on Kubernetes mostly, so I will usually. Uh, I will use more kubectl uh, gadget on the bug node. So uh, our task is to get information from uh, data from a file. Uh, which file is it starting? So uh, Inspector Gadget comes with a lot of uh, gadgets that already exist. Uh, how do we find the proper one? Uh, there is something called Artifact Hub, which is a CNCF initiative to um, host a lot of artifacts from different projects including gadgets from Inspector Gadget. Uh, so if we search for opening file, we find a few gadgets, and this one looks like it is what we want because it trace open file. Um, so let's try to use that. We will use the trace open gadget to find out uh, which files are being accessed. So uh, we prepare the demo uh, here. Uh, we have a Kubernetes system. It has a single node with um, 
with Minikube, and we have a couple of uh, pods uh, running our workload. And now we will use uh, Inspector Gadget without installing it, just with the kubectl debug node command. Um, oops, so, sorry, I pressed the wrong thing. So the demo starts again. Um, but this kubectl node command can run any, it's not something uh, specific to Inspector Gadget, it's part of Kubernetes, and it will run any uh, container image. In this case, we choose the Inspector Gadget image, and we run the command ig run trace open, so it will run this uh, trace open gadget. Uh, so it will uh, uh, fetch this image from uh, OCA registry, and then we ask it to display uh, sp specific fields there. Um, and we filter on the uh, worker container, so we only see uh, things from that container. Uh, now we can see that, uh, thanks to Inspector Gadget, we see that the workload uh, opened this file called status, uh, sometimes it opens it in read-write mode, so that's already uh, helpful. Next um, part. So we were told this uh, workload uh, connect to a server and uh, send some data there. So we can use some other gadgets that we found on uh, Artifact Hub, like Trace DNS to see which DNS request it does. And here we see it, um, it try to resolve the name server.default. Uh, it gets some address, and uh, so we get some information about how things work on this workload. Then we can use the trace TCP uh, gadget, and we can get to know that it connects to this IP address on this port 8443. So we can get a hint that it's a TLS and get more information there. Okay, but so far we didn't look in um, what is actually the workload. We just have general information. And now we can get more precise and we want to look in, in the workload what data this uh, workload is sending. Uh, we know it's TLS because we were told it's uh, TLS and it uses Go. Uh, but we cannot just sniff the packet on the network because it's encrypted, so uh, we need to do something else. And uh, let's look for a gadget that can do that. So if we search for SSL on Artifact Hub, we find this gadget uh, and it can use uprops <coughs> to attach uh, on a open, for example, open SSL uh, library to before it's encrypted or after it has been decrypted to be able to see the unencrypted traffic. That looks good, but unfortunately, um, our workload doesn't use open SSL, it doesn't use GNU-TLS, it uses the Go standard library for uh, cryptography, so uh, this gadget doesn't work. Um, so it seems like we need to write our own gadget, that will be uh, the next demo. Um, so we will write a gadget that um, get the TLS traffic using uprops on the uh, Go standard library uh, using uh, this TLS uh, Go standard library. Um, okay, we will call this gadget Go TLS. And we don't have to start this from scratch when we write a new gadget. We can look at this uh, gadget template uh, GitHub repository. And uh, that's a repository designed as a template, so you can use this, use this template button here, and it will automatically create a new uh, Git repository uh, initialized with the files here. So it will uh, already have some template that you can fill to help you. Uh, you don't have to do that, of course, you can write it from scratch. Uh, that's uh, kind of what we did in the next part of the demo. Um, so the BPF code is how it looks like. Uh, I will just focus on the first two lines to uh, tell you how we do this in Inspector Gadget. That's uh, just a, a function defining a BPF program. Um, you can see the section name, it includes the word uprobs, so Inspector Gadget knows it's a uprob to be attached to a specific user space program. And uh, the program will be slash worker, so you get the full path of the binary. You can also specify a, a library like libc or something else. But in this case, it's a static uh, binary. And then the name of the symbol. On, in Go, the name of the symbol is quite long because it includes the full path, like uh, crypto slash TLS con dot write. Uh, so we know it's the write method on the con object from this crypto TLS uh, Go standard library. And then from this point, it, um, this uprob will be executed every time this write method in Go is uh, executed. Okay, so let's see how we build it now. So we, we will not build it manually with a C-Long LLVM. Instead, we will build it with Inspector Gadget. Uh, so we are in a directory with uh, the source code. And so far, Inspector Gadget doesn't know about the gadget. We have not built it yet. 
uh, as you see, image list is empty. And then we will build it with the IG image build command. We specify, specify the name of the tag, uh, so that's uh, uh, grcr.io and so on, that will be later pushed to this uh, GitHub registry. Um, the build is not in the current directory, it's built in the uh, Inspector Gadget store, which is located in a varlib IG. It's a bit similar to Docker when you uh, build uh, Docker images. And then we push it with the IG image build, so uh, IG image push command, and uh, we don't run it uh, with curl by patch, I'm sorry, <laughs> with curl, but we will uh, sign it first to try to follow some uh, security practices. So we generate a public private key with a cosign, and then we will check the digest of the image and uh, sign that specific digest so, um, using the cosign sign uh, command. And this command will uh, both sign it and push the signature to the um, container registry, to the OCI registry, uh, so that other people can uh, get it automatically. Okay, so that's done for the demo of building and pushing a gadget. Now we push it on the OCI registry and a colleague can, will be able to pull it uh, and run it. So um, this is done with the IG image pull command. You specify the uh, OCI uh, image of the gadget. And then um, Inspector Gadget know about the gadget, it just pull it and it can uh, run it. So we can run it locally with IG run uh, on the name of the gadget. And uh, we can either say uh, check the cryptography key or don't. If we want to check it, we can specify which uh, public key we trust. By default, it trusts the uh, keys from the inspector gadget pro uh, project. So the official gadgets, are, you don't need to specify it. But if you want to trust your own keys and build your own gadgets, you can do that. Um, in this example, we don't get any output from this uh, command. That's because we run this gadget on the local laptop, but the workload is running on Kubernetes. So in the next demo, we will show how to run the same gadget, but not locally, but in Kubernetes. Okay, next slide. How to run the gadget we just built, GoTLS, on Kubernetes. So um, that's done. So I have installed um, Inspect gadget on Kubernetes, so it means uh, the gadget demand set is running already, and now I can use gadget uh, kubectl gadget run, and uh, with the name of the gadget, and it get it start to get events. Here I requested to get the events in JSON, so I get a series of JSON events, and you can see the workload. So it's unencrypted. We see it's some HTTP request uh, post on some URL and we see the query on the response. Um, that was done with a new gadget to uh, get unencrypted traffic on TLS using the Go uh, standard library. Okay. Yeah, so if you want to start uh, writing your own gadgets, we now have a good documentation on that, and uh, you uh, can start with the Hello World gadget that um, gives you much information about all the different concepts that we use in uh, Inspector Gadget. Um, this is an example for, um, of how to, for, exa yeah, for example, add the container enrichment, like get information uh, based on, on Kubernetes in, into your data. Um, you just have to give your uh, program basically the information of the mount namespace ID, which is uh, there for, for almost every kernel um, call that you can hook into. And uh, Inspector Gadget will then automatically fetch that and add things like container name, namespace, and so on. And the other way around is if you want to uh, have your eBPF program filter before that, like uh, only um, evaluating certain pods, namespaces, and so on, you can uh, just add these three lines to your eBPF program, and it will filter automatically uh, for the stuff you're interested in. Um, I will just add that um, I find it quite nice that you don't need to add any Kubernetes knowledge in your eBPF program. That part is done by Inspector Gadget, so the eBPF program itself doesn't do uh, any knowledge of systemd, Kubernetes, and so on. Um, there are a few uh, projects using Inspector Gadget in different ways. There is a Kubespace, sorry, Kubescape, uh, which is about uh, Kubernetes security. Uh, this is a CNCF project. 
Um, and the way it uses Inspector Gadget is um, it's a Go project, so it imports the Go library from Inspector Gadget and build it in a single binary and use the gadget that way. Uh, we have another CNCF project called Headlamp. That's a user-friendly Kubernetes web UI on desktop app as well. Um, it has a, a plugin system to show different things from um, different plugins, and one of them uh, with Inspector Gadget, you can display additional things uh, from the, what's happening in your pods. And the way uh, it works, uh, since Headlamp can run on a different machine than Inspector Gadget, it connects to Inspector Gadget using uh, gRPC and WebSockets. So that's a different way than Space. Uh, and then I, I know of other projects using uh, yet another way, which is about um, just running AG or kubectl gadget as a uh, program and passing the standard output and get the JSON event this way. So depending on your use case, you can consume, uh, consume Inspector Gadget in your own project in different ways. Yeah, so I briefly talked about data sources and annotations. And this is an example that we did, uh, like there was this gadget from another author called syscall count, and basically it counts all your syscalls, puts it into an eBBF table uh, map, and um, Inspector Gadget would get that and print out the numbers uh, as JSON. And with just a couple of annotations in the command down below, uh, you can make it, uh, make Inspector Gadget actually export that to a Prometheus endpoint, so you can grab that from there and get a nice output. Grafana. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, yes. So that's was quite cool that this gadget doesn't need to have any Prometheus knowledge or Kubernetes knowledge. Uh, it was reusable by Inspector Gadget and automatically do that. Um, next step in the project. Um, something I'm excited about is user stack trace. Uh, we got a few requests from different projects for that. What it means is when you execute your BPA program on OKProb or UProb, for example, it's quite useful to know uh, from which um, context in the user space application it comes from and to get the user stack trace from that. Um, there's something quite complex uh, depending on your uh, programs. If you have um, interpreted language like uh, JavaScript or something, you cannot just, uh, it's a bit more complex. Uh, but that's something I would like to have. And then, um, yeah, we're also working on, on uh, having Inspector Gadget bundled with different gadgets, so you can run them in an air, air gap uh, scenario. Um, then uh, we're working on uh, the runtime configuration so that you can specify multiple uh, different gadgets in one, just one file that you can check into your uh, Git repo or whatever and run them at the same time. Uh, we're extending open telemetry support, adding support for traces and locks. We already support the Prometheus exporter. Um, yeah. um, another thing I, I like to have is um, improve our existing gadgets. Um, from time to time, we get requests to add new fields in existing gadgets or to add new gadgets for specific use cases. Like uh, we recently added the FS Notify gadget for Fan Notify and iNotify. And uh, since Inspector Gadget is part of uh, CNCF, uh, we can benefit from the Linux Foundation program for mentorships. And at the moment for this term, uh, that is three months, uh, we have four uh, projects, mentorship projects in parallel. And this is about chaos testing, about event generation, a new gadget for uh, deadlocks, the detecting deadlocks, and uh, improving the testing framework. Thank you. And now we are open for questions. Great talk. I, I uh, don't know much about eBPF. Uh, I know my, my colleagues uh, have worked with it. Uh, so uh, maybe a little bit provocative question in context of the demo. Uh, how is it better than S-Trace and L-Trace? Because the, the, these are the tools I would, uh, you know, I would just uh, take and see what's going on with the process. Yeah, we just needed a story to tell. <laughs> so this might be a little unconventional uh, to debug it that way, but we wanted to showcase certain gadgets. Um, you can, of course, use those tools as well. Yeah, but we, yeah. we, we do have one called, sorry, I'm looking on the project. Um, and so we do have one called Trace Loop, which does basically as Trace does. And, uh, one of the benefits of that is way more performant. Actually, run it overhead. Uh, yes. Um, 
So in this example, we focused a bit on new probes, but uh, eBPF program can run in more diverse uh, way of. Uh, so there are, uh, you can attach to kernel functions, which you cannot do with S-Trace, or you can attach to uh, the network traffic to get uh, using socket filters to get a. Uh, your eBPF program call for every packet on a network, or you can attach to LSM, so uh, Linux security module, which means that uh, every time the LSM hook for uh, opening a file, for example, is executed, you can get a, uh, your program executed. Um, on, in general, we try to um, be support different eBPF programs for the kernel in different contexts. And you can also combine them, that if you have um, if you want to attach both to uh, uprobe um, from the libc function to get uh, the DNS request, but also on the network side to look at the packet, then you can get more information about the same thing, and you can combine them and uh, get uh, more detailed event. Um, yes. So, yeah, I had a question. Uh, great talk, by the way. I had a question about the security model. So. I understand like the two components, you know, um, WebAssembly and the EPPF, there's some sandboxing inherent in those, but I assume, you know, obviously to accomplish this, especially, yeah, there's a lot that's exposed to those. So like the, the part of the demo, you know, just searching on Artifact Hub for, is this like how bad could an un, a malicious uh, inspector or a gadget, like could it do anything or do you know what I mean? Uh, yes, so if the BPF code is malicious and you run it, uh, that could be quite bad, depending on what it is. Uh, it depends a bit of the type of uh, eBPF program. If it is a socket filter, maybe it doesn't do too much damage. It's just looking at the network traffic. Um, but otherwise, in, in some gadgets, you can um, send a unique signal, like a sick kill, to the process. So that could be bad as well. So in general, uh, you should not run gadgets uh, from source you don't trust. And you can either trust the upstream one or you can have your own trust model and use crypto uh, signature if you want to. Hey, thank you for the talk. Um, I'm also by the noob on eBPF. Um, I, when we attach the probe to the GoTLS standard library thing, uh, use the, like a symbol to identify which function to hook into, right? Um, is there something I could do if my program doesn't have symbols, like attached to a specific location in the program, say? Uh, yes. So uh, actually, I, I the exact problem, because sometimes the binary is uh, stripped, so it doesn't have a symbol table, so it's more difficult. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can do. One way is to, if you know the address, you can specify the address. It's not in the current uh, main branch of Inspector Gadget, but uh, we have a, a branch for this. And uh, another way, uh, so for Go programs, there is a project called uh, Go ReSIM. Um, what it does is it rebuilds the symbol table by looking uh, at the source. And um, yeah, I, I didn't make it work yet, but that's something I'm interested in too. Are the gadgets pre-compiled? You need to include the BCC tool chain in your OCI image? Um, so the gadgets are pre-compiled, yes. But nowadays, we don't use the BCC uh, part anymore. They are compiled to uh, ELF file. And we use uh, BTF on core to be able to um, relocate them dynamically to a new kernel. So it, it, when you compile it on a specific kernel, you can run it on a different kernel because uh, of, uh, well, thanks to BTF. So they're lightweight images. There is no tool chain on board. Uh, that's correct. The only uh, library we use is the Cilium eBPF Go library to load uh, the ELF file into uh, the kernel. Wonderful. Thank you. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I don't know about. I don't know a lot about. Uh, sorry. Um, I don't know much about eBPF, but would it be possible to leverage like processor registers to have a per process power consumption? And do you know if there are already gadgets that go this way? Um, sorry, could you repeat the question? I uh, know yeah, it. if it would have, if it is possible to have uh, uh, to like leverage process registers and have a per pro, uh, per process power consumption, I have a process and I want to know how much power is it drawing, process the single process itself. 
and if there is any gadget that is going on this direction. Um, about power itself, I don't know, I've not looked into it, but uh, I could say there is a gadget called um, Top EBPF. What it does is measure the number of nanoseconds that a CPU spend in the execution of the EBPF program uh, and measure the memory used by EBPF maps. And that's something that the kernel provides that we just uh, uh, give. Uh, about power, sorry, I don't know how to do that. Um, I'm wondering what kind of on-host uh, coordination you have for the BPF programs once you download them from uh, with Inspector Gadget. Uh, yes, so in the command I used in the demos, it downloads the uh, gadget from the OCI registry. Um, but there are some projects that could use that differently. Like if you don't want to have any network traffic when you start your gadget, you can uh, compile and you, um, the gadget uh, embed them in your Go binary and uh, compile them in your project. Um, I'm not sure what Cubespace, uh, Cubescape is doing, but uh, uh, th I know they use the Go library for uh, Inspector Gadget. I'm not sure if they download the gadget or if they embed it, but uh, that's something we want to support for sure. You can also export and import uh, the gadgets into tar file. Yeah. Talk into the mic. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so you can also export and import uh, gadgets to a tar file, and then get it back onto another host. Any more questions? No. Then let's thank our speakers again. <laughs> and we'll be continuing in ten minutes with a talk about fixing kernel bugs.